Welcome back. Today we are on day nine. Oh my goodness. We're almost a third of the way through this 30 days of prayer for our children. So we're on day nine and um, we are going to be talking about being yoked with Christ. So I love this topic because I was an animal science major in college and um, I know a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit about what it means to yoke animals together. Um, I've never seen this in person, but I have investigated because it just fascinates me, this analogy that Jesus gives us in Matthew 11, 28 and 29. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus himself, I mean, like if he gave us this example, we've got to take notice. So Jesus would have known as a carpenter, he may have even created the yokes that were used in in yoking animals together. Um, But Jesus would have known that these yokes that were used with oxen or or work animals um, were designed to allow one animal to teach another. And two animals or more would be yoked together. And often an older, more experienced animal would be yoked with a less experienced animal. And the idea is that they would learn from this older animal that they are connected to physically by this Uh, device that was placed over their shoulders and neck and kept them together so that when they strayed out of position, the yoke would be uncomfortable. If they weren't together in alignment, working together in unity and unison, um, it would be uncomfortable for those animals. So the more experienced animal would allow this other animal to come alongside it and learn from it. And so naturally it would be uncomfortable when you're yoked with an animal that's going in one direction if you try to go somewhere else. So if we look at this deeply personal example that Jesus gives us, he says, take my yoke upon you for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. So first of all, taking that yoke upon yourself means be united with me, trust me, to lead you in the right way, place yourself under my authority, and I'll be gentle. I'm not going to wrench you away from that wrong direction. I'm going to be gentle in the way that I lead you. I'm not going to pull you away so that it's super painful, but you're going to feel it a little. (laughs) I think that's what he's saying. But, um, But learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We have to be teachable. He doesn't say, I'm going to put my yoke on you. And so now come along. He says, take my yoke upon you. So there is so much just rich teaching to be, jump, you know, to, to jump into here with this yoke analogy. But what we need to know for our children is number one, we want them to be yoked with Christ. But that means they need to submit themselves to be yoked with Christ. They have to willingly place themselves under his teaching. And number two, we need to know, uh, or we need our children to to know that when they stray away, that there's going to be a little bit of pain there. And so they're going to be learning along the way that God's way is best. So instead of feeling like they've been gypped, um, you know, they might see these other animals out in the pasture doing their own thing and they might think, oh, you know, I've been gypped out of something good. By being yoked with Christ, we need them, you know, to understand that it's painful to stray away from Jesus. It's actually freedom to be walking next to Jesus. And that's not something that's just automatically downloaded when they, even when they become believers. So they need to learn that. It's a process. So let's just pray for them that number one, they would submit themselves to that yoke. And number two, that as they walk, that they would be learning and and just discovering even through their wanderings here and there that God's way is best and to walk beside Jesus is the way to abundance. Oh God, we just pray for our children right now. 
that wherever they are, whatever they're doing at this very moment, that they would feel your presence all around them. God, that they would sense you drawing them into a deeper relationship with you and into a working relationship with your son, Jesus. Father, if they are not saved, we pray that they would just be drawn to you. God, that they would just sense that their wanderings in the pasture are meaningless, that there's something more. We pray that you would point them to Jesus, that they would see him standing there with an empty yoke and that they would see that he is good and gentle. God, we pray that they would feel the weight of the burdens that they carry. We know that in this scripture, Jesus is talking to the Jews who were carrying around the heavy burden and the heavy weight of obedience to the written law and following the letter of the law and ritual sacrifices day after day after day, year after year after year. God, we're in the same position without Jesus. Jew or Gentile, we carry around the heavy burden of our sin. We carry around heavy burdens of trying to live life to the full. And when we try to do it without you, there's nothing but frustration. God, give our children this picture, whether they're saved or not, give them a picture in their mind of you standing there, extending your hand, extending your yoke, just waiting for them to teach them the right way, the right way to live, to give their lives meaning and truth and purpose. Father, you're the author of our salvation. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. We pray that they would see that. We pray that they would take that step toward submitting themselves to the authority of Jesus, to being yoked with him. And we just pray that as they walk, that they would learn just ever so gently the pain of wandering and the joy and the truth and the wisdom of your ways, that they're not missing out by walking under your authority, that there is freedom in those boundaries and in that law and in the limitations that you've given us. We pray against the lies of the enemy that would try to convince them otherwise. And we just pray that they would see the example of Jesus and and that they would be freed from any ill-fitting yokes that the world or even religion might try to force upon them, God, and that they would be yoked directly with Jesus. And we thank you so much, God, that because of him, we are free from the heavy yoke of that slavery to sin. In Jesus' name, amen.